In the last session, we discussed God's marvelous power manifested through the ten plagues to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. As Pharaoh didn't immediately obey God's command of letting them go, all the Egyptians suffered the great plagues. But we could feel God's love and compassion even from the ten plagues. When Pharaoh suffered from a plague, he promised to set them free, but once the plague was gone, he soon changed his mind. Even though he experienced God's majestic power, he repeatedly changed his mind and hardened his heart. God already, God already knew that Pharaoh would do so, yet God didn't start with the death of the firstborn to make Pharaoh afraid of him and reluctantly obey him. God desired Pharaoh to let them go voluntarily, so he started off with minor ones, giving him chances. Without his patient love, God would have been like, He is so evil, He will oppose me, forsake the grace, and change His mind. So He would have given up on Him in the first place. But because God is love, He wanted even such an evil person to turn from His ways and offered Him many chances. We should be able to realize such love of God even from the ten plagues. We shouldn't just learn that these things happened, but through these situations, we should realize Father God's love of enduring and being patient with us. Should His love be upon us only, but His love is is upon other people as well. You may think he did commit evil. Why? But why did he give them the measure of faith? We think so because of our evil. But even though God knows that someone will change, He still gives them grace and love because He's doing well right now. It's not that God just blessed them without doing anything. If a person is doing well right now, even though he would change later on, Father God would give him grace and opportunities. Father God is like cheering for him so that he wouldn't change later on. But we, but we people may think, we may think, Sina Pastor didn't know about it. He would change later on. But Father God, even though He knows that someone will change, if only He is doing well right now, He gives, still gives them grace. He wouldn't be like, I know that you will change, so I don't want to love you in the first place. Father God doesn't do so. We have to look at the history of m a m e n with such such love of Father God. You know, the pastor taught us not to change our heart and he rejoiced even when someone changed a little bit, even though he knew that someone had a lot of evil, for him to still, he gave them grace and love so that he would change spiritually. We have to remember this love of Father God, and we have to realize how great His love is. But we shouldn't con- judge and condemn this. We shouldn't judge and condemn what s i n a Pastor did in the his- throughout the history of Mount Min. You know, from the ten plagues, from small ones to greater ones, He He, I mentioned that the ten plagues inflicted on Egypt carry significant meanings for our Christian life. By making bread of their meanings well, we can, ex- we can escape from any kind of trouble and provide clear answers when counseling church members with problems. For example, some novice believers are persecuted by people in their workplaces and families by not conducting themselves wisely in their life of faith. Such troubles are the plagues of blood, where 
drink of water turned into blood. When we are persecuted, even if we have no fault, as you give thanks, rejoice, and act more faithfully, the persecution will soon turn into blessings. But in case you have faults, you have to repent right away to drive them away. If you are a novice believer and don't know the truth well, in the face of a trial, but these people cannot realize their faults, even when they are in in the face of a trial. So the church members should teach them, they should teach them why such persecutions and troubles came, and they should help them drive away those troubles and trials. If there is dissension or breaking of peace in your family, if you have troubles in your workplace by Satan's work, this is the plague of frogs, where frogs went into their bedrooms, ovens, and even their kneading bowls. Let's say, as a believer, you have a light fever or a cold. If that doesn't go away quickly even after receiving prayer, you have to look for things to repent of. Particularly, when a little children suddenly has a high fever, It often results from his parents getting angry, especially little children. When they have a problem, you should know that it results from his parents' faults. This is the plague of net. If a believer gets stricken with a more serious, infectious disease, not a minor one, that's the plague of flies. Not just these plagues, but all the ten plagues are closely related to our Christian life. So I urge you to make bread of them. I urge you to, I advise you to refer to the life of disobedience and life of obedience so that you can have a more awakening. Even, even as Pharaoh suffered various plagues, he opposed God and persistently refused to let him go. But being stricken by the last plague, he finally surrendered. In Egypt, all the firstborns of the livestock and men were killed over a single night, so the sounds of weeping were all over the nation. There were people who lost their heir to their family, and even Pharaoh's first son, His successor died. So Pharaoh urgently called Moses and told him to take them out according to God's will. The Egyptians, who'd horribly suffered because of Pharaoh's stubbornness and tenacity, also prompted them to leave, giving them a lot of silver, gold, and clothing. Actually, God already notified Moses of this outcome when he first called him. He said, So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles, which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that, He will let let you go. I will grant this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it it shall be that when you go, you will not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of our neighbor and the woman who lives in their house articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing, and you will put them on your sons and daughters. Thus you will plunder the Egyptians. All things were fulfilled according to God's word. And the great journey towards Canaan began. There were about 600,000 men except women and children. So, with children, the elderly, and women added, the number was well over 2 million. The Bible says, a mixed multitude also went up with them, along with flocks and herds, a very large number of livestock. There were a mixed multitude, namely Gentiles, a lot of livestock, necessary items, and wagons to carry all their loads. It's not easy to even imagine how all these things moved together. At this point, the people were just excited about the blessings in Canaan, but Moses was different. After the ten plagues, they were leaving Egypt. They thought they would soon arrive in the land of Canaan. They left Egypt with such fluttering heart. 
But Moses was different. Leaving Egypt, he was carrying this heavy load of leading a tremendous number of people who didn't have faith. From today, we will explore their journey towards Canaan. As we talk about the various incidents along the way, I hope you will... You shouldn't just hear them. You have to apply yourself into the story. I hope you will ask yourself, how would I have acted if I had been among them? If I had been in Moses' position, would I have acted according to God's will? Then, this message will give you grace and strength, spiritual strength. I ask in our Lord's name that all of you will become more than able to take the promised land of Canaan given to us. You shouldn't just feel regrettable about the Israelites and think, why did they resent God? But you have to apply it in yourselves, in your current spiritual level of faith. If you apply it into yourself, you can examine and you can find the the reason why you haven't received answers. As you do so, you can quickly receive His answers and blessings, and you can also quickly fulfill what God has planned for this church. With God working for them, the Israelites finally departed Egypt. God went ahead of them, guiding them in pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. But not long after they started marching in peace, as they reached the shore of the Red Sea, they saw this terrifying sight. Pharaoh, who regretted letting the Israelites go, was chasing them with 600 select chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt. Ahead, they were blocked by the sea, and in the back, Pharaoh's army was chasing them. They heard them coming. You know, they saw... They could feel them coming. The Israelites could feel them coming. The Israelites were overcome by fear. So they started to complain against Moses. They were like, Why did you bring us out of Egypt and have us die in the wilderness? We have to reflect on how Pharaoh's and the Israelites' hearts were in that urgent situation. Pharaoh finally surrendered after suffering all the ten plagues. But soon enough, he again changed his mind, regretted his decision, and chased them. Even after experiencing God's works to a great extent, he ended up acting according to his evil. You know, ten plagues didn't come without a reason. They, I mean, they felt and experienced God themselves. Even though they had met God, they they had met God, which couldn't be compared to the idols they were serving. But as the ten plagues ended, After a short while, right after the Israelites left, you know, the Israelites were like a precious asset to them. That's why Pharaoh regretted having let them go. So he started to chase them. This shows how hardened and evil he was. What about our heart? Let's say you are stricken with a disease, you face a trouble, you repent and turn from your ways, receive the prayer from the shepherd, and receive resolution of your problems, and then you rejoice. And in the face of a trial, you lower yourself, and you try to search for things, repent, and then you have your your problems resolved. And after a while, after you live in peace, you begin to take take back in the world, and you begin to live as you please, and you go back to your old habits. This is like, this is just like Pharaoh. You have to realize this fact and cast off your change of heart. Only then, your problems will be resolved. You know, if 
You should always receive God's answer and blessings as God's children. What about the Israelites leaving Egypt? The ten plagues in Egypt were more than enough to let them know who God is. So they realized that God is almighty and that any trouble can be resolved by His power, no matter what that is. Moreover, when they left Egypt, as God told Moses in advance, the Egyptians gave them great quantities of silver, gold, and clothing. The Israelites were overjoyed when they were taking them out, but in the face of a trouble, they were quick to grumble against Moses and God, like, why did you bring us out of Egypt and have us die in the wilderness? They themselves wept and cried to God, asking Him to save them, asking Him to save Israel. But after God answered them, they complained again. You have to know that their exodus from Egypt was the work of God who listened to their prayer. It's not that Moses forcibly dragged them out. Who is our God? Even while he inflicted frightening plagues on the entire Egypt and destroyed all the first f o r m s over a single night, he kept the Israelites from being harmed at all. If they had believed in God who governs our life and death and blessings and curse, they wouldn't have needed to worry, have worries about Pharaoh's army chasing them. Yet, despite having witnessed such amazing power, they didn't trust in God. We were, we have n t it's like us, we have witnessed amazing and great power of the shepherd. When we saw them, we rejoiced. and glorify God, we confess, we will go to New Jerusalem with the shepherd. See, the pastor didn't ask us to love him. He didn't say like, if you don't follow me, you cannot go to Jerusalem. He only ta- uh, healed us and he only told us to glorify God. He never asked us to give him offerings. He, he didn't lift himself up. We know this well. But, We love, the shep- we, we love the shepherd because we have been healed and received answers by his prayer. It's because we have realized about heaven and we realized about God who is invisible. No one said that if you don't love the shepherd, you will face disaster. No one said that. We ourselves were inspired to confess I, please guide us and lead us, but in the face of a trouble, or if a situation doesn't agree with our thoughts, people forsake their grace, people lost their passion. It's like the Israelites who complained and grumbled against God and Moses. We have to examine ourselves as to whether we are just like the Israelites. Even so, God didn't reproach the Israelites who lacked faith. Instead, He manifested His great power through the faith of one person. We have to remember this. God worked on account of Moses' faith, not on account of the entire Israel. Understanding their weak faith, God worked on on account of Moses' faith. It's not that God didn't love Israel. He just understood their weak faith, and He extended His great love to them. It's like mothers carrying their infant children until they learn to walk. Even when they complained and grumbled, He had mercy on them, tried to understand them, and hover them. But you shouldn't be misconceived. As time passed by, when they should have have enough faith Uh, as time passed by things were different but at this point they just left Egypt they hadn't seen uh, much of God's power that's why God had mercy on them and manifested power through Moses the Bible says Moses said to the people do not fear stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. Then, how do you think God worked for them? 
the angel of God who'd been going before the camp of Israel moved and stood between stood between the camp of Israel and the camp of Egypt. You know, the angel of God, it doesn't mean that they saw visible angel. This was happening in the spiritual realm. If they had opened their spiritual eyes, they would have been able to see them. But but what happened was, because the angel of God moved, the pillar of God, cloud moved and stood between the camp of Israel and the camp of Egypt. The spiritual things happened first, and then the physical phenomena followed. Then, at night, there was light on the side of Israel, but on the side of the Egyptian army, they couldn't see anything blocked by the cloud and the darkness. The Bible says that it gave light at night because the Israelites could see the moon and the stars. On the contrary, the camp of Egypt was blocked by the cloud and the darkness, so they they couldn't see the moon and the stars. Because they couldn't look ahead, the Egyptians couldn't come near the Israelites. That's how Father God worked. They separated them. Then, as Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, a strong wind, a strong east wind blew all night, and split the sea, making dry land appear. Uh, As you read the book of Exodus, don't be misconceived that the Red Sea was split in the morning by the wind that had blown from early in the previous morning, uh, previous evening. God split the Red Sea right when Moses stretched out his hand. The moment he stretched out his hand, You know, the water was split immediately. Even though the sea had already split, the east wind kept blowing so that the divided waters wouldn't come back together again. Why did the wind blow all night? It must have taken quite a long time for those numerous wagons, cattle, and sheep, and over 2 million people to cross the sea. That's why the east wind blew all night to make way for them. I mean... As soon as he stretched out his hand, the the water was split immediately and they walked through the midst of the sea and while they walked, it didn't come back together. You know, the water was divided by the strong... You know, how could people pass by while strong wind was blowing upon them? But the pastor clearly explained to us how that happened. We couldn't have, without spiritual death, we couldn't even, because the pastor had had deep understanding, he wondered how could, you know, when hurricanes hit, have you ever seen the pictures of hurricane? The tornadoes, even animals, can be blown away by these strong wind. But the waters were split by the strong wind. So it's only natural that people and animals had been blown away. But Father God clouded the space with the spiritual uh, space so that they could pass by in peace. Where else could you hear such explanation? See, a pastor, only through the prayer and fasting, he could receive all the revelations from God and gave us clear explanations of how it happened. So we have to realize how blessed we were. Why don't you visualize this spectacular sight? As I prepared this message, I thought when we go to heaven, we would see how that happened through a video. I couldn't wait to watch it when I go to heaven. Please visualize this spectacular sight. With thunderous wars and the strong wind, the vast sea was split and the people walked through the midst of the sea. 
on their both sides were divided waters standing like high walls. There were walls on both sides. They could have seen fish swimming around inside. Let's say we are witnessing this scene and walking through it ourselves. How would it feel? We would be moved and inspired beyond words. We would be thrilled with His majestic power. Deeply moved, we couldn't help but glorify the Almighty God and worship and praise Him from the bottom of our hearts. Another incredible thing was, when all the Israelites had crossed over, when all all of them had crossed over, God worked. And God worked, you know, when they had crossed over, the Egyptian army was in the midst of the sea, following them. As Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, the waters instantly came back over the army. All of them were buried in the sea without any of them remaining. Seeing this, all the women, including Moses' sister Miriam, danced with a timbrel and glorified God. While they were extremely thrilled and inspired, they wouldn't have just said, Father, thank you, only with words. The women danced with a timbrel and praised, worshipped, and magnified God. The Bible says, when Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in His servant Moses. God, the Lord of hosts, was with Moses and let Him manifest great works. That's how the people, that's how the people fear God and trusted in Him and His servant Moses. The ten plagues were also a series of wondrous works, but the splitting, of, the splitting of the Red Sea once again confirmed that God was indeed in their midst and guaranteed His servant Moses. Brothers and sisters, if the Israelites had truly been good-hearted, they would have trusted and obeyed Him unconditionally from then on. Then, let us look at how they acted. We find the next incident after the crossing of the Red Sea, recorded in Exodus 15, uh, which happened in m e r a h While they traveled through the wilderness after crossing the sea, they ran out of water. They entered the wilderness of Shur and arrived in m e r a h in three days. They managed to find water, which was too bitter to drink. Then, how should they have acted? They had, they had witnessed the ten plagues and watched God splitting the Red Sea. Because God even split the sea for them, there was no way He wasn't able to give them water. Thus, they should have knelt down and asked with faith, Lord God, please give us a drink of water. But they again, they again failed to demonstrate faith. Instead, they grumbled against Moses and made such a fuss. Fortunately, this time again, God was patient with their lack of faith on account of one person, Moses. As God heard Moses cry, He turned that, in, he turned that undrinkable bitter water into sweet water. It would have been good if the Israelites had gained true faith through this, but regrettably, whenever they faced trouble big and small thereafter, they failed to demonstrate faith. Now we are talking about the process of taking the land of Canaan. Uh, So we are not going into very detail. So we are just skipping the words in Deuteronomy and Numbers. Anyway, but you have to apply this story to our situation. You know, people were able to drink water through Moses' power. You know, we also experienced the same kind of thing. You know, Father God manifested such work through s t e n Pastor's prayer. But do you still remember 
that power and still give thanks for it? Still, Father God is being glorified through it. You know, due to the pandemic situation, we cannot be provided with... uh, Please... Those of you you who still have the sweet water, you're still experiencing God's power. But we... Shouldn't we give thanks for this alone? We we have to say we should continue to give thanks and pray and diligently attend worship services. But why have you forgotten all that and complained and grumbled just like the Israelites? We have to fix such behaviors. We have to repent of these things. Even if the situation goes the way against our thoughts, still we have to confess, Father, I believe you. Only then can we conquer the land of Canaan. Only then can we receive blessings from God. You know, how the Israelites did As a, result, as a result of their behavior, they continually went through trials in the wilderness. You know, they repeatedly went through trial and then this repeated on and on. They rejoiced when they received the answer and they, when they faced the trouble, they, you have to think why your, spirit, why your Christian life is like the life in the wilderness. You, we have to advance to a higher level. We shouldn't, our Christian life shouldn't be like that of the Israelites. We have seen such work of a bitter water turning into sweet water. We are still seeing. We have to repent and turn from our ways and solidify our faith. even when people grumbled against Moses God forgave them on account of Moses and he continually showed his work of salvation when they grumbled about the lack of food he gave them manna when they complained about not having meat God sent them quails so they could eat meat to their content you know people continually talked about Egypt, how how happy they were back in Egypt. You know, see the pastor told us not to take in the world. That's how we grew in faith. But as people lived in peace, they began to miss the worldly things. They began to say, the gospel of holiness troubles me. See the pastor troubles me. It's like the Israelites. who used to complain. We were happy back in Egypt. We used to eat meat, living as slaves. You know, while they were living as slaves, they used to eat a lot of meat. And they say that they were happy. And that's what they said as they complained. Whenever they complained, they talked about how happy they were in Egypt. We shouldn't be like them in our Christian life. as we cast off evil and sins? Do you find yourself uh, uh, stupid out in the world? And do you face a lot of trouble living by the word of God? But as you only follow the word of God, it feels like you may suffer loss, but it's not. You will have blessings. Some of you may say, as I live by the words, people see me as stupid. As I make a, it feels like I always suffer a loss because I live a diligent Christian life. I'm lagging behind because I'm living a diligent Christian life. You shouldn't be like the Israelites who missed their lives in Egypt. You have to examine whether we are like we like we were like them. You know, 
We shouldn't, you know, envy those worldly people who attack others and for their benefit. Even though we may, if it feels like we suffer loss, if we obey the word of God and follow it, it's, it becomes our reward. Some people compare themselves to worldly people, compare themselves to people who are committing evil. You have to think your words, your complaints, Dishearten God. As a result, you drive yourself onto the way to disasters. The Israelites continued to grumble against Moses. As they reached another place where there was no water, they got thirsty and grumbled again. Then God had Moses hit a rock so that water could come out of it. For Moses, watching them grumble whenever they faced a trouble was lamentable beyond words. He had to ask for God's favor on behalf of the people without faith. At the time, he had the duties of calming them down, teaching them the truth, and planting faith in them. He even faced this desperate situation where he had to ask for their forgiveness, risking his own salvation. He did. After he received the Ten Commandments, Moses went up the Mount Sinai, fasted and prayed for 40 days, and received the commandments for the people. But they grew impatient and committed great sins. They created the golden calf and offered sacrifice before the idol and ate and drank around it. Deeply disheartened by their evil deeds, God intended to destroy all of them and set up a new great nation out of Moses. But again, Moses hung on to God, saying, But now, if you will, forgive their sin, and if not, please blot me out from your book which you have written. Here, the book which you have written refers to the book of life, where the names of the saved ones are recorded. Because Moses was communicating with God, he knew that one's name has to be written in the book of life for salvation. Whoever doesn't have his name in the book ends up in the eternal fire and brimstone of hell. Even though Moses knew better than anyone what the book of life is and what a terrifying place hell is, he earnestly pleaded with God, risking his own life. Not able to ignore his earnest plea, God forgave the people again. The Bible says, How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Because they had witnessed his works again and again, it must have been enough for them to have faith. But whenever they faced a new kind of trouble, they still opposed Moses and resented God. Brothers and sisters, throughout the history of Mount Min, we have to examine whether as to how we have been like. Even though Father God manifested great wonders and signs, He also, at the same time, He also allowed us to go through a te- times of test to test our faith. And through these times, Father God made our shepherd's power even greater. But many people, in times of a trouble, failed to demonstrate faith. And they ended up judging and condemning things and they complained against the shepherd and ended up losing faith. Many of such cases happened. Those of you who are listening to this message have overcome the situation, but you have to look look at yourselves more closely. You have to examine as to whether you have strive to circumcise your heart, whether you have complained against people around you, argued with others, and put the blame on others, whether you have stayed awake 
in prayer, whether you have worked faithfully and put unceasing trust and faith, as you go through a trial, you have to more, do things more firmly. Then you can pass all these situations with I ask you please don't think because I remain here I have overcome all the situation you have to think whether you have complained you have argued with others whether you have passed judgment or condemnation if you have done so you have been like the Israelites who complained and grumbled against Moses as you realize this and change yourself you can receive blessings. You shouldn't think because I remain here. When the time comes, Father God bless us anyway. Brothers and sisters, when we please God, when we move God, that's the time we receive His answers and blessings. Then, how can we please and move Him? The answer is faith. Thus, once we believe in something, that faith should be steadfast and never should we forsake the favor we've received. This is faith. But the Israelites were the opposite. Having witnessed those numerous works, they still didn't have faith. In the face of a trouble, they always resented Moses and disheartened God. Even though they escaped from troubles by Moses' faith, when something didn't agree with their thoughts, they even condemned Moses unrighteous. On their journey towards Canaan, they watched countless wonders and signs, yet they constantly tested God and His servant Moses and grumbled. Even so, God bore with them again and again, manifested His power to help them grow their faith and resolve the issues that they were complaining about. But you shouldn't get this wrong. You shouldn't think they received God's answers even after praying with complaints. That would work for me too. When in times of trouble, I can just complain and I can just complain and pray to God and that would work for me. God says that we can receive His answer only when we tell Him our request in firm faith and thanksgiving. The Bible says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. There is no reason for worries if we have faith. If we believe God's words, telling us to believe that we've always received what we prayed and asked for, we wouldn't be worried in any situation, but calmly offer our prayer and petition. Believing in His answer, we would ask Him in thanksgiving. We wouldn't just say thank you with our lips, but have gratitude from the bottom of our heart. Only when we ask Him with such a heart can we receive His answer. Then, how did the Israelites in Moses' time receive God's answers? God did satisfy their needs, but it's not that He answered their complaints and resentment. God worked on account of Moses' faith. God also expected them to grow their faith by witnessing His power and change into proper ones before Him. You have have met this church and witnessed marvelous and great power and experienced them. Things that couldn't be resolved by medicine or science have been resolved by Sr. Pastor's prayer. Some people even say they didn't receive prayer directly uh, because they didn't receive prayer directly. It's not that they weren't It's it's not that they were healed by the shepherd. They were just healed by God, they say. You know, you have to know that most people, because they they lacked faith, their faith was not enough, they asked senior pastor to pray for them. You know, most of you would say, most of you are well aware that 
you are having received the answer didn't happen by your faith. You know, even while the Israelites complained, God answered them because of Moses' faith. The same applies to us. Our having received the answer happened by s i n a p a t h e r s intercessory prayer. We shouldn't forget this fact. And in addition, we have to develop our faith pleasing to follow God. We have to remember His power and we have to make sure we, sh- we don't we have to make sure we don't complain but we have to rejoice only then this is faith we have seen and experienced many things I acknowledge God's power I know how God how great God is these words are not just faith and if we complain if we grumble it's not faith if we complain that means we lacked faith when the Israelites complain about food God said to Moses in today's scripture speak to them saying at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread and you shall know that I am the Lord your God namely God showed his works so that the Israelites could know how almighty he is and believe and obey him That's that's why He manifests such works. He manifests such works to help them know and believe Him. Here, to know God isn't just to have knowledge about Him. The Bible says, the one who says, I have come to know Him, namely, I believe Him, I love and know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar. So to speak, even though you confess, I believe God, I love and know Him, He is my Savior, even if you confess so, if you don't keep His commandments, your words are all lies. If you truly believe, you cannot help but keep them. Why? Father God commanded us to keep His commandments. Not keeping commandments itself is darkness, is the enemy devil. While we say that we love God, how could we obey the word of the enemy devil? If just because we love God, we cannot help but obey His commandments. That's why the Bible tells us that if we don't keep His commandments, we are a liar and the truth is not in us. In other words, While we know the words of God with our head, if if the words are not in our heart, we cannot keep them. Therefore, we should cast off all sins and evil, circumcise our heart in the truth, and resemble God who is light. As we do so, the works we've experienced become our spiritual faith. You know, the Israelites witnessed the ten plagues, the splitting of the Red Sea. You know, they... had witnessed the Egyptian army being buried in the sea. They had experienced the bitter water turning into sea water. They also experienced the sending down of manna and quail. Even so, they steadfastly complained and grumbled against God. You may wonder, how could they have not faith even after watching power? That's right. Even after we witness His power. In order order for us to have faith, we should obey His words. You know, if Israelites had asked God to help them, they could have developed stronger faith. The same applies to you. By witnessing God's power, we know that God exists and heaven and hell are real. Then, we should obey According to His word, when someone bothers us, we should try to love them. When we are told to pray, we have to pray without ceasing. In times of trial, we shouldn't feel, we should rejoice and we should try to give thanks and rejoice. Then, spiritual faith will come from above. But even after witnessing such power, even after 
unless we change ourselves according to the word, it doesn't become our faith. Spiritual faith is not given just because we desire. It should be given from God. And when does our Father God give us spiritual faith? When we live by the word of God. You know, some people grow in faith. Others don't. It's because they don't live by the words. That's why they are not given spiritual faith. Thus, we should examine ourselves how, as to how we have been like. In order for you to have spiritual faith, you may find yourself in a situation uh, where God demands something beyond your level of faith. Even in that situation, if you do what Father God likes you to do, your faith can improve. Let's say, if you lose passion, if you complain, that means He will continue to go through trial. But, let's say, you have financial trouble, then you should examine whether you have offered the perfect tithe, whether as you find your faults, you turn from your ways and repent. After that, Father God will turn your trouble into blessings. That way you can have... But if you don't do so, but just complain and grumble and just live the way you like, you cannot have your faith improved. But our our mommy members have witnessed numerous works of power. If you indeed believe that He is living, you should look for things to please God. You know, it depends on your individual situation. You can please God by working faithfully. You can please God by lowering yourself. As you please God in your own ways, you can have your faith improved. Only such people can enter Canaan promised by God. As we go through this situation, as you go through this trial, are you demonstrating faith? Are you improving your faith into the one that pleases God? If you haven't done so, you have to do. You have to try to bring down His You know, church workers, whenever they find a situation, whenever they find themselves in a trouble, they should look back. They should make confession of faith. They should look for things to please God. If you just complain and grumble about the situation and feel agonized, especially the church workers, the leadership in the church, they should take this opportunity to improve your faith so that you can fulfill what Father God has planned for us in this church. The Israelites who had witnessed numerous works through Moses and received God's guidance reached Kadesh Baniya after many ups and downs. They were about to enter Canaan that they dearly longed for. We will talk about what happened from then on in the next session. Let me conclude the message. The Bible says, In your loving kindness, you have led led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you have guided them to your holy habitation. Starting from the ten plagues, God guided them with the pillars of cloud and fire. He split the Red Sea, turned the bitter water into the drinkable sweet water. Until their entry into Canaan, He fed them well with manna and quails. All these works were by the grace of God who provided for free. God leads His people to His holy habitation, namely the promised land of Canaan, with His grace and power. But to enter this holy habitation requires us, 
His children to cast off impurity and achieve sanctification. Having experienced God's grace and His power, we should circumcise our heart and possess true faith. God is looking for people who do so. Thus, we should sanctify ourselves and diligently circumcise our heart. To circumcise our heart means to remove the four skins of our heart, namely, evil, untruth, and darkness in our heart. And we have to fill it with the truth. In our life of faith, we've experienced many works of we've experienced many works God manifests free of charge. We should never forget the grace and never forget how we met Him and have experienced His works. We should diligently listen to the words of goodness, circumcise our hearts, adorn ourselves well as the Lord's bride, and change into the holy children of light who resemble God. If we apply Israel's process of entering Canaan to the world evangelization, to the construction of the Grand Sanctuary, and to our entering New Jerusalem, we would find the solutions. For God's promises to be fulfilled, most of all, we have to achieve sanctification and possess spiritual faith. To make all of, to make all of us such true children and enter into His promises, God has manifested numerous works of power to this day. To accomplish His great tasks tr- through us, he, uh, He's allowed us to experience countless work signs and in His power. Ex- he will incessantly manifest even greater and more amazing signs and wonders. Seeing all these works, we shouldn't be grateful and happy just for a moment. We should indeed believe the living God from the bottom of our heart and achieve a sincere heart and perfect faith. By doing so, no matter what trouble faces us, we should only give thanks and rejoice and demonstrate deeds of faith, thereby testifying to the living God even to unbelievers in the world. Then, God will accomplish the world evangelization and the construction of the Grand Sanctuary through us and finally lead us to New Jerusalem. I pray in our Lord's name that all of you, with an exception of no one, will possess perfect faith and witness the fulfillment of God's given promises. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes, and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after-effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. 
restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.